Let's talk about the magic market. And of course, in the background, you can watch some Core 2020 stuff. For those of you who still um, like this kind of stuff, I, I, I don't know. Everyone's like, oh, Core sets, nobody cares. Are you sure? Are you sure about that? Well, everybody, my name is Rudy, and you're watching Alpha Investments. And today, we're going to crack a couple boxes of Core for my patron, Bradley S. And we're going to talk about what's going on in the world of Mujik the Goothering and the news as we approach... The Throne of El Drain, also known as the Drano, as we approach the release of Drano, everybody. So, um, a lot of controversy about these premium products, everybody. And Wizards continuing to push prices up. A lot of controversy. People getting nervous and angry. Boom! Soren Mythic number one. That feel good, Bradley? Did that feel good? So, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of where we're at with everything. Uh, people are starting to get a little concerned with the amount of these premium flashy versions of cards. And, um, you know, we like pretty cards and flashy things. But, you know, when you buy $80 for a booster box like this versus paying three, four, five hundred, dollars it starts to make you step back and go, wait a minute. Would I rather have a whole case of six boxes of, like, Core 20 or Ravnica or War? Or would I rather buy one little flashy thing, you know? Temple! Finally got a temple here. And that is making people very nervous. A lot of people are kind of relating things to the baseball card sports crash of the 90s. There's definitely getting a lot. Leyline! Finally! And, oh, just garbage. So, yeah, that's kind of the hot topic right now, everybody. Um, too soon to say how all this is going to unfold over the next couple years, but, yeah. Yeah. But it's getting a little nervous for everybody. Like I tell everyone, at the end of the day, you know, you don't need to pay these massive prices for flashy things. Cavalier! Mythic number... Oh, foil rare Hydra? All right. So, that is where we are. And uh, Rudy continues to talk about Core 20. Because it's still the newest, most um, recently printed set. There's a nice cage. And it's probably one of the best Core sets I've seen in many years. And yet, nobody seems to... I don't know, care or appreciate it. Symmetry and a nice axe. I mean, I don't know what the deal... I think, you know, <laughs> you know, one of the reasons I think we could be having this problem is I think everyone's kind of getting desensitized. Uh, number one, of course, I put out a box opening video. I try to every single day. So everybody can come home, get off work, and people love to get off and just kind of watch a nice 10, 15-minute video of some pack cracking to get that urge out. Boom, Cavalier again. Three Mythics already. That's a nice start. Um, the second thing is... Uh, I just, I think the the increasing cost of things and the quantity of products is starting to have an impact. Knight of the Aboon and a Servant Common. I, I think a combination of all of it is kind of making a few people feel burnt out. And it's kind of getting people a little uneasy about injecting tons and tons of money into magical cards. And that's kind of, I think, you're starting to see a little bit of that boiling over. On the, uh, on the open market, everybody. Boom! Leyline of the boy. Oh, and a second foil rare. Okay. That's what we like to see. All right. We got some temples. We got the best Leyline. We got two foil rares already. Not bad. Core 20 continues to deliver. And a Lotus Field now. That's what I'm saying. You know, you can enjoy magic and get a lot of cool cards, like, on a basic product without spending $500 a box. I mean, you know, nice swampy. It really, you don't, I, I try to tell people that, but I think it's almost like the way Wizards words and presents and, I don't know, ooh, Temple of Mystery, the way they kind of present everything to the public, it's like, you know, you almost don't feel good enough if you don't buy the flashier, fancier versions, like, oh, you got the cheap version, you know, I, I kind of feel that's the vibe they're doing. Wow, really? A call you now? Four Mythics already? Whoa. That's what I'm saying. You know, you can enjoy magic. You don't need to buy these crazy overpriced things, everybody. I'm telling you all. And the Broker of Blood. There's a lot of good ways to enjoy this stuff and have fun without doing that. But I, I know they really pressure everybody. The way they market and present it, it it's really... It makes it tough to just be like, I, I you know... Because here, here's the thing. We all complain about the price. But deep down, we all go, wow, that's really pretty. That's a neat, flashy card. It's, it's a fun experience. We, I want to I crack some collectors. I want to be a part of it. And, and that's the problem. I, I get that mindset. But then after that, when you cool off and you kind of reflect on it, you're going, God, ladies, 
I kind of feel like I'm getting ripped off by wizards with these continuous price increases. Boom, Acolyte of Flame and a nice fairy. So I think that's what's happening. <clears throat> I think you're seeing a little bit of the, just the people's frustrations. Because you don't see people complaining. Nice little reclaimer there. You don't see anybody complaining about, really, the quality of the cards anymore. Like, the quality's improved substantially. So, at the same time, you also don't see people complaining about, like, Core 20. You don't see people complaining about War of the Spark. You don't see people complaining about the Ravnica sets. Right? I mean, do you think about that? You're not seeing that. The, what, the, the problem is, even these, like, the Modern Horizons. I haven't met anybody who just says, oh, Modern Horizons is terrible. I don't like that. I mean, you know, everybody, some people say, well, it's not my favorite because I'm a standard person or I only like vintage and I don't like modern. Okay, respectable. But no one's complaining about the actual product. People are complaining about these bigger and bigger price tags that they're kind of have their hand out. Boom, Epiphany Temple. This is a very good core 20 box, by the way, everybody. This is a double foil rare box. We got Temples, Lotus Fields, we got Ley Lines, Four Mythics. This is another very nice box opening. I don't even think anyone's appreciating these. Like, I look at the views in the comments on the Core 20 openings, and, like, people just... The public just does not care. Boom, ley line, very nice. I can tell there is just no excitement for Core 20. Like, I'm the only one opening boxes of Core 20 and, like, positive about it. You know, and this happens sometimes. You get people... Nice little foil in the gate, by the way. You get sets like this. This has happened many times over the years where the product's not bad. But it just simply doesn't sell well, and there's just not a lot of positivity surrounding the product. And this this is definitely, Core 20 is definitely having that happen. Oh my god, Glocus of the Ro Wow, five Mythics. Last pack, box one. Nice smooth opening there in a couple minutes. Uh, Bradley, dude, nice box, man. Very smooth, good ley lines, good uh, temples of Strylands. Double foil rare box, Lotus Field, and you got five good Mythics. Not bad, man. That was a nice, smooth opening right now. What was that? It only takes me like six, seven minutes to crack a whole box. But man, that was a fantastic, you know? And I don't think people are appreciating that. I don't think everyone's really appreciating the Core 20 thing. That's why I'm the only person opening these boxes. But, you know, hey, whatever. I enjoy it. I still think it's fun to do. And it's fun to see how these things uh, unfold over larger scales when you open more and more. Because there's no other channel out there that's opening the volume of Magic product that I do. So it's interesting to track. Like for those of you who actually watch all the videos, uh, I usually do about 30 videos over a couple months of every set. Boom! Ley line right out of the gate. Another foil fairy. It's the same foil we got. And uh, I like to get a good feel for the sets. It helps me. It helps everybody kind of see what the pull rates are, the averages. Broker of Blood. Oh! Foil. Oh! Ancestral Blade. That's nice. Nice little uncommon foil. I love uncommon foil. That's probably my favorite sweet spot for all common, for all standard products. So, I always felt when I did mass box openings, that was where the hidden gems were. Because people don't focus on common uncommons, and man, long term, when something moves, Field of the Dead. That's when, uh, man, the foil version just moves hard, man. Always a very, very nice way to position yourself for the future, everybody. Anyways, moving forward here, we got another title of this tracker, and... What is this guy? Unchained Berserker, huh? So... That's kind of where my mindset is on everything. I've just been kind of monitoring everything and watching everyone's opinion of all these products and kind of the, the back and forth and the complaints of the higher pricing that Wizards is charging, which can't blame everybody, man. It's definitely can't blame them for that. It's very tough. But at the same time, you know, I'm also watching that Magic continues to be very healthy and the market continues to be pretty strong. I mean, it is what it is. Accol Boom! Not Accolade of Flame. Awakened Inferno! Mythic number one, box two. We got the big queen herself. Mythic Dr. Chandra. Very nice, everybody. Okay, that's very cool. And hang executioner. Oh, and a foil little reef guy. So, anyways. But yeah, that, that's, kind of, uh, that's kind of what I see happening here, everyone. And uh, I'm not really sure how all this is going to play out. A lot of people are getting nervous about these flat. Everybody keeps telling me, Rudy, this is like the baseball card world. It means we're getting towards the end of the bubble, and I, I, I'm getting a lot more of that, those fears and concerns, so... Ugh, planar cleansing, terrible. I truly just don't know. Like I told you guys, I can't predict the future. I don't know how all this is going to unfold. You know, Temple of Mystery and just a nice foil plummet. Let me straighten these little piles here. But the only thing we can hope is one thing I can tell everybody about Wizards is as time goes on, 
Um, if they go too far in one direction, lottery cards or different things and print run, they do adjust. They are constantly adjusting and changing magic. It is a living, breathing, movable business model in their eyes. So no matter if it's a good or bad direction, the only thing that's certain is Wizards Uncertainty, that they will continuously change. Legion Zen, another un Are we getting the same common foils between both boxes? Kind of feels that way, doesn't it? So that, that's kind of, that's what I see. That's that's my opinion. And Reverb, oh God, this is, we might have our first bad box, everybody. We're, uh, we're approaching halfway through. We may have our first crappy core 20. Ah, uh, that's what I get. Leyline of the Void, the double tap again. I was like, every time I think we got a bad one, hold my beer. Let's do it. Spike it up, baby. Give me the good pulls. There we go, Cavalier. Here comes the Mythics and the Juice cards every time I say that. So, still haven't had a really dumpster fire one yet, but I feel like we're overdue. Knight of the Aboon and another foil to gate. These are the exact same foil cards. Does anybody not know, is anybody noticing this? I feel like I'm the only person going, wait a minute. How are you getting duplicate foils? Hey, look, Ceratops. It's like, do you realize the difficulty of actually getting duplicate foils in one video is? It's like extremely rare, but for some reason it's actually happening. Starfield Mystic. And a Knight of the Aboon, Mythic, or Mythic, Foil Rare number one. Hopefully, uh, we've been averaging multiple Foil Rares, so, you know, now I'm kind of like, all right, well, let's just see what the next one is. And Dungeon Geist again, really? Last 12 packs, uh, honestly, Bradley, this may be one of the weaker Core 20 openings I've uh, we've ever done. Flood of Tears, because uh, definitely not, we're definitely missing a lot of the good cards. This is definitely... Uh, so far, I'm going to call this one a 4 out of 10 opening so far, but this is definitely uh, definitely on the low end here. Loxodon Life Chanter. Such a weird name, isn't it? So, but yeah, so that's kind of where things are. I'm not really... It makes me wonder how things are going to be in like five years. Wow, another Cavalier, really? All right, three Mythics now. Maybe we're going to pick up some steam in the clothes here. Because I feel like eventually they're going to keep pushing this premium price direction, and eventually they're going to start backpedaling. That's what Wizards always does. Glint Horn again? Isn't that like our third one? Really? That's what I think is going to happen. I think they're going to push it too far. Move some commons. And I think what's going to happen is Wizards will end up backpedaling. Boom! Kethis the Hidden Hand. Mythic number four. Wow. All right, so we went from a one Mythic box all the way back up to a four Mythic box. I didn't think it was going to happen that way. And a Hydra. And another Foil Rare. Maw of Flames with a whopping seven drop. See, that's what I said. We've been getting it's it's two foil rares in every box ever since they changed the pull rates. Man, you can there's a huge difference in that. And another cage. So we got two cages in this video. But overall, I don't know everybody. We're definitely at a strange little uh this pack is stuck. A strange little turning point in Magic's uh kind of bit of its uh direction in history right now to really see. Wow, Acolyte of Flame and a foil swampy. I swear we're getting the same foils. I gotta check this in a second. We only got a couple packs left. I gotta check these foils. I feel like we're getting all the same ones. But and tails end, even the rares. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Maybe I'm sniffing too much ink over here, everybody. But I think we're in a very strange period in Magic's history where Wizards is kind of seeing this nice little dino. They're seeing an opportunity to just really squeeze more money, and people keep paying it. And I don't, I don't know where this is going to lead. It's never been done this way. This was not the original intention of Magic Cards. So, that's all I got for today, everybody. My name is Rudy, and again, thank you for watching. Brad, thank you again for being a patron. Not bad opening, my friend. Box 2 was definitely weaker than Box 1. Box 1 was fantastic. Other than that, everybody, thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying Magic the Gathering. Hope you're enjoying yourself, your life. And again, make sure you appreciate things and slow down every once in a while.